Amen. 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 Saints of God, praise God for pressing. There's somebody across the aisle that pressed their way to get it. They didn't feel like blessing the Lord today. Okay. So just in case you think you by yourself, just look across the aisle and say, I press you, I press you. Ooh, the bed was like it was shackling me, but I pressed my head. The enemy tried to hold me hostage, but I pressed my way. I finally didn't want to cooperate, but I pressed my way. There's a blessing in pressing. significant the removing of those things that are shaken mm. as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain oh my god I thought this morning the title can God count on you look at your neighbor and ask them a question can God count on you now, they should answer you because you asked them a question. <laughs> God count on you. For those of you that's watching us via YouTube and Facebook, can God count on you? Amen. You may be seated. It is no coincidence that the timing of this message comes on Pentecost Sunday. And the truth of the matter, in as much as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, I've seen um, throughout post this week of Pentecost Sunday celebrations that we understand that Pentecost was more than an experience. Pentecost is a way of living. Y'all can get that name. It is unique to when God looks at us and chooses us from a plethora of choices. And his choosing is done from the election of his grace. His choosing is done from a place of finality. When God chooses you, he has chosen you through, through the completion of your life. In other words, God knows what you can handle before you experience it. And so then it is God's methodology because God has some peculiar ways. And as much as we know that his ways are higher than ours, there are times where we have a difficult time processing his way because it seems like it is counterproductive. It seems as though it is taking me in an opposite direction. But knowing God, we should understand that God knows what he's doing. And so he uses different mechanisms. He uses different processes. 
He uses different means to get the believer from one place to another. He also uses different means to change intrinsically the believer. Because understanding there are some places that God has assigned you to ascend that in your current state you are not sufficient or adequate to stand in. Well, I'm going to say that again. I know that we believe that we are ready to stand, to ascend, to assert ourselves in the places that God has orchestrated for us. But God, knowing the intangible, knowing the invisible things that are hindering or can hinder us, God has to set up, has to create, Jocelyn, a circumstance, a situation, just so he can remove those things. Because the truth of the matter, those things are us. They have become a part of us. And we would dare not get rid of them because they are us. And so then God has to uh, surgically with his, with his plan to remove those things that can hinder us. He has to remove us from places that can hinder us. Yeah. And so in this text, he says that yet once more, uh, there's going to be a removing of things that are shaking. That word removing comes from the word metathesis, which means the act of transferring from one place to another. It is the removal or taking up or away, to transpose, to, to put one thing in the place of another. To put one thing in the place of another. To remove, to take something away, to take something out. To transfer, to transpose. We know that this is God's, one of God's ways because even in this particular book, God does a transposition. He does a removal by transferring us from having to use the blood of goats to the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. He replaced the blood of goats with the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, he, this is God's way that he transposed uh, having to use the priesthood of Melchizedek over the priesthood of Aaron. We know this is God's methodology that he will, he will remove things that although they have been in place for a period of time, it does not really mean that they will remain. And then we even know that God removed the law and put in place grace. So it is not uncommon for God to use a transitory process to move things, to move people. It is his way to use this process because God has reckoned, has reasoned, has concluded that the present is inadequate, insufficient, is not suitable for what's ahead. And so he says, yet once more, which means I've done it before and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to shake yes. some things because it, it is necessary to shake those things so that what is eternal may reside and rest and appear. It, it is the removal of those perishable things so that the eternal things may remain in our life. There are some things that we have deemed uh, eternal, but the truth of the matter, they are not. There are some people we think we have to have, but you don't. Oh, I wish I could. I'm talking to somebody other than myself. Uh, uh, there, there are some people, there are some relationships uh, that we perceive that we must have in others to go forward when the truth of the matter, you don't have to have them. You don't have to have them. And so it is God's means, it is his ways to, when he shakes things, it is because he's trying to remove the perishable things. He's, he's trying to remove the temporary things. This is why Paul says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, we, we look not at those things 
which are seen, but the things that are unseen, because the things that are seen are temporary. But but righteous, what you don't see, huh, it is eternal. So then it is God's way that sometimes we experience a shaking. Yeah. This shaking can be catastrophic. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The shaking creates a chaos. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we cannot figure out why has this crisis befallen me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is because God is shaking some things up. Right. God is shaking your life up. Yeah. God is shaking our ways up. And so one of the means that God uses to create a shaking is the abrogation of someone. It is the death of someone or the death of something. The end of something creates a shaking. You lose your job. There's a shaking. You lose a loved one. There is a shaking. Yes, yes. And so then this, this shaking occurs on so many levels. The shaking takes place not only mentally, because when we experience things, Michelle, uh, mentally, it, it has its gravitational pull on us. Yes. When we experience things, Monty, it has an emotional draw on us. When we experience the shaking, it causes uh, sometimes even a financial dilemma oh, in yeah. our life. Oh, yeah. It creates even sometimes a physical disposition. And even sometimes the shaking is designed to sift. The social relationships that are unbeneficial, yes, yes, productive in our life. Yes, we know, Sarita, that the shaking is always, of course, designed to attack our spiritual constitution. Because our spiritual constitution at times must be amended. Mm. Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Right? Uh, let, let's talk history. Pastor Mac. We know initially when the, the Constitution was started, it first had the Bill of Rights, uh -huh. which was Ten Amendments. But over the course of time, as the country grew, as society changed, as the population grew, as the mindset of the nation changed, the Constitution had to be amended. Yes, yes. Additional amendments had to be added. And so then in the believer, we start out with one spiritual constitution. But it is through our evolution that then that spiritual constitution must evolve, must be amended. And it is amended through the shaking. Through the shaking. There are some perceptions that you have now that you didn't have two years ago. And so then the shaking occurs on so many levels. But there is one stratosphere that we do not account for when the shaking comes, and that is eternal. Because the shaking is not just for what we see, but also for what we don't see. The shaking is that design to also to look and to move and to alter the eternal. And so then when the shaking comes, as much as we are engrossed, engulfed in what is happening with us visibly, we must also understand that there is something happening intangibly, invisibly, that we do not see that is behind God's orchestration of the shaking. God is not shaking just to be shaking. And one may ask the question, what is the difference between the spiritual being shaken and the eternal being shaken? When there is, Katrina, a spiritual shaking, it is designated towards you. It is targeted towards your own spiritual maturation. The spiritual shaking is 
is, is, is coming after your spiritual maturity. It is, it is coming after the things that are lying in the crevices that are trying to usurp your spirituality in the form of carnality. That's good, sir. This is why the shaking comes. Because some of us are starting to drift. We're starting to slide down into carnality. And so the shaking comes to, whoop, to cause an abruption in that. But the eternal is not about you. Even though the shaking is happening to you. Watch this. We said this this morning in empowerment. Contrary to popular belief, you are not the center of the universe. Yeah, I know some of you, that's hard pill to swallow. I know, I know, I know, but you'll be okay. You'll be okay. And so when there's an eternal shaking, it is because God is usurping his will in the presence of your life. It is sparks when the eternal shows is now that God's providence, his plan trumps what you want. This is why you say, well, how do you know, Pastor, when there's a shaking saying? When things happen that we can't understand. Because there's some things we know happen with shame because of sin. Yeah. Come on, say amen. amen. There's some things that happen because we sown bad seeds. Yeah. yeah, come on, say amen to that. There's some stuff that happen because we hellish. Yeah. 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 But then there's some things that happen to us that, that bewilder us, that cause us to contemplate, what have I done mm, yeah. that warrants such turmoil in my life? Mm -hmm. And after having done the assessment, we cannot fathom, surely, I know I had been perfect, but that should have warranted this. Should not have brought such a monstrosity of a cataclysmic event in my life. Yeah, yeah. And so then that means that the shaking is eternal. It's not about you, even though it's happening to you. Yeah. Good. One of the things you have to understand the shaking is twofold. One, the shaking is designed to remove some things. Now, understand the shaking removes things, removes people, removes relationships, removes ideologies, removes philosophies, removes attitudes, removes the things that have hold the hus captive. It is the removal of those things which are shaken, which are made, that's why it is, they are perishable. So the shaking always targets comes after the things that are not essential in your life. Oh God, help me. I know contrary to popular belief, some of you think you really need certain things to be okay. Okay, let's come out the third habits. The pandemic proved that. Yeah, yeah, it proved, it proved a lot of things. A lot of things we said we couldn't go without. Yeah, you stayed at home. Because you didn't want to die from COVID. Yeah. You, you thought you needed them. No, I tell you what. Just leave it at the door. Right. <laughs> Put it in the mailbox. You know, you know some of us, we, we, we thought we always had to go to the grocery store and get our stuff. We start ordering online. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the pandemic. Change. It made us see that there's some things we couldn't live without. Right. It did. But the shaking does that. The shaking removes the crutches that we form. The shaking will remove the things that have handicapped us. Mm. Oh my God. God, this Holy Ghost. The shaking removes those things that are not essential to your eternal destination. The second thing that the shaking does 
is that it will strengthen or consolidate what survives the shaking. The shaking will cause a strengthening of what is able to resist the shaking into an immovable creation. What you say, man of God? What the shaking does. It causes me to develop a strength that allows me not to be moved by what others have been moved by. There are some things that people could not handle, hence they fell away. Mm, God. This is why what survives a shaking is called a remnant. Remnant survives the shaking. The remnant is unmovable. The remnant manifests only after the shaking. And so then, where it looks like Pastor Matt, we're all the same, but when God puts us in the same environment, some of us will not survive. We don't have what it takes to stand. And so where we thought, we thought we were all together. So why John said, if they were with us, then they would have continued with us. But they came out from amongst us that we would know that they were not really with us. So the shaking moved, transposed, put some things in place of other people. Okay, let me help you connect the dots. About a year and a half ago, I preached a series on the replacement. The replacements come after the shaking. The replacement comes because they are the remnant. The replacement comes because there is a shaking to transpose put someone in their spot, to put something in that spot. Hmm. Oh my God. And so there's some things that we are fighting validly to hold on to that God is causing a shaking so that he would replace them with something. Now the difficulty is, how can I receive something better when I thought this was the best? How can I receive something better when I thought I had was the best? Hmm. Hmm. According to your calculations, it was. According to God's plan, it was not. Because what you had was a stepping stone, but not the cornerstone. hold on to things that we are familiar with. Yes. Yes. And those things that we are familiar with, we have associated their longevity with their them being eternal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that one more time. If I got it a long time, then it must be eternal. Mm -hmm. 
If I thought that way for a long time, it must be eternal. It must be the way I'm supposed to be. It must be the way I think. It should be like this. That is not true. And so then this is why it's difficult to let go. And so God forces a shaking. And so, watch this. We said last week, in Romans 11 chapter, I want you to go back to that verse. In Romans 11 chapter, verses 4 and 5. Let's read that. But what saith the answer of God unto him? Hmm. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men hmm. who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Hmm. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant wow. according to the election of grace. Watch this. So the remnant is the group of people who survived the catastrophic situation, the shaking, that was brought about by God. So when Paul writes this in, to the letter to the church of Rome, what he declares here is that God has shifted his focus from the Jews to the Gentiles. Because the Jews had strayed. But he encourages the Jews by saying, look, God hadn't totally forgotten about you because he's left a remnant. He's left a group of folk who have not bowed down, who have not used their mouth whose actions are in sync with their words. And he says that this remnant remains. So don't be distraught when the shaking comes. Because the shaking has been already predestined. This is why the remnant has been predetermined. This is why he says I have reserved, which means he had already thought about, had already set aside a group before the shaking took place. My says, oh my God. Because he knew that his plan would cause some of the Jews to stray away. So to keep the church intact, he had to already set aside some people who will still remain faithful through the shaking. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Let, me, let me come down. Let me talk to the church and say a light there. Yeah. God already knew when Lady Benson passed and Satan passed that there would be a shaking in the church yeah. and that some people would be too emotionally distraught that they would fall away. Yeah. Yeah. But he had already put some in before the foundations of the world have been created to be able to endure the shaking. So when you look around and you say, where they at? It's because they couldn't handle the shaking. This is why I'm trying to help y'all. One why I'm cool. I'm good. Because this was orchestrated by God. This was in the plan before we got married. And see, you know, I know we hear from God. And we want God to tell us anything, Brandon, but he not. Because some of us will try to alter God's plan. You know, I, I've been one of them. Because had I known that, we would have already been sitting at the hospital. If I knew that was going to happen, yeah. let's see, it's supposed to come in. Yeah, exactly. We ain't going to have to worry about no ambulance. We're just going to sit here. Yeah, right. And she probably been looking, what we, why we have to hide them? Uh, Wait for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm going to try to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you want to try to stop it, you're crazy. Because yeah. I don't know nobody volunteering for pain. Yeah. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. 
Come on, speak up now. Hold the peace. Oh, no, okay. Exactly. So this is why God didn't reveal everything. Because we would mess up his plan. And so then the shaking comes. But watch this. He used the term shaking because I often wonder why not stirred. Over there with his bow tie. Better go set. Not scared. So I ask the question why not stirring? It is because stirring mm -hmm. is designed to kindle, mm -hmm. to anew, to resuscitate, mm -hmm. to set ablaze one's mind, strength, zeal. That's why what, what Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift. He was not trying to remove the gift. He was just trying to activate the gift. So God didn't create a stirring because stirring would have only excited us. The stirring would have only resuscitated us. But the shaking Shaking comes to agitate you. The shaking comes to unsettle what's settled. Yes, yeah. See, some of us wouldn't move unless there was a shaking. Come on, man. Right, right. Some of us wouldn't move unless there was a shaking. A stir, we just. <laughs> then after a while, just. Settle back in. But the shaking is different. Because what a stirring does, a stirring, you know, for those of you who used to drink. <laughs> Somebody came to my office the other day and they saw my oil sitting on the desk. And they said, these look like some Hennessy. <laughs> You know what they were saying. <laughs> I'm going to say, look. I'm going to be with the color. I said, no. That's not that. I said, the color you used to is that fake oil. It's the real oil. I'm used to that olive oil you get from the grocery store. It's the real stuff. And so, and so, so what, 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 what stirring does, when you stir a drink, it merely dilutes it. The stirring is designed to just add some chill to it. You know, they bring you a drink, okay. They bring you your strawberry lemonade. You know, okay, well, okay, watch this. Don't go to Red Lobster and you order a drink and it don't be cold and you have to stir it. Well, you're stirring it so that it be cold at the bottom because the ice is floating on the top and your straw is pulling the drink up from the bottom. And so the drink is hot or warm at the bottom even though you got ice. So what stirring is designed to do is to chill the whole drink. But yet, with the stirring, because of the ice in it, yeah. it loops it. Yeah. 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 But when there's a shaking, yeah. 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 when there's a shaking, yeah. a shaking does a lot more than that. Because what the shaking does is that it will change the appearance and the texture yeah. of the drink. Yeah. 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 The shaking gives the drink a cloudy yeah. appearance. Yeah and causes even more dilution in it. Yeah. What are you saying, man of God? What? Drinks that are shaken are shaken because they are made with a certain type of ingredient. 
You know what I'm talking about. Like milk, cream. Yeah. That, that'll cause you have to shake the juice. Some of the drinks that are made with citrus fruits. You have to shake those. But those that are made with clear ingredients, you just have to stir those. So if it's made with milk, you must shake. If it's made with something clear, you stir. Okay. Hmm. Paul told the church of Corinth, desire the sincere milk of the word. So if I made with the word. Yes. Then to get the results out of me that the word says, yes. I can't be stirred. Right. Yeah. I must be shaken. Yes. But those things that are made by clear ingredients. Something like water, then it has to be stirred. I believe the scripture talks about or references water being symbolic of the Holy Ghost. Mm. So then, if that be the case, then the Holy Ghost who is responsible for disseminating gifts, those gifts must be stirred because of the clarity in them. What do you mean? That he does not confuse the gifts that he releases. So they don't have to go through a shaking. To get your gift to become or to materialize or to matriculate, it has to only be stirred. But for the word of God to materialize, for the word of God to mature you, then there must be a shaking. Yes. All right. hmm. And so then the shaking, the shaking is necessary because some of us have read and heard the word and it's merely settled in our spirit. But it's not produced any fruit. And so the stirring comes to revive our imagination so that we can access God's divine imagination. The stirring comes because God wants us to see some things different. You know, just stir it just a little. You see it? You'll be okay. The stirring is not emotionally taxing on you. Yeah. You don't cry from stirring. Yeah. Uh. Hey. No. You thank the Lord for the stirring. Yeah. You question with the shaking. Because the shaking is not after your imagination, it's after your conscience. Because it is the shaking that's designed to reach what's in our conscience that has become unconscious. There are some things that are hidden in the catacombs of our conscience that are merely waiting for a certain time to usurp and to arise in your life. They were implanted. Watch this. They were implanted through some of the wounds that you encumbered, through some of the things that you endured as a child. And so they've been seen in you. And it's only when a certain time, in a certain environment, a certain situation, when certain things are said, that that seed that was put in you as a child comes up. And so then the shaking comes to remove that seed before it takes over your life. 
The shaking comes to remove what you have perceived that you thought was essential for you to have life. The shaking comes by way of suffering. Because it is the in, in order to reach the unconscious part of us, then there has to be this paradox, this shaking, so that the things that are inconsistent with God's plan will come to the surface. And the only way to bring those things to the surface, God creates some unexpected tragedy. And it's from those unexpected calamities, those tragedies, those situations, that make you more conscious than you were before. Okay. See? Right. It's kind of wild. Third heaven, let's say. You know, let's take the shooting at Duval. Since that shooting, what has become the top story is school safety. Yeah. We weren't talking about school safety. Nobody was really pushing gun laws. Nobody was talking about going to sue the maker of the automatic rifle until now. And so then there are situations that happen in our life that rearrange our priorities. See, some of us don't take care of our bodies. Let's, let's let me hear you out. We eat what we want to eat. We definitely don't drink enough water. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I don't drink enough. I don't drink enough water. But get dehydrated. <laughs> Wind up in the hospital. You start walking around with a gallon of water. Just trying not to do it. You were shaken. Yeah. Yeah. Your health became now at the forefront of your conscience. Yes, yeah. And so there are things that we don't think about that we postpone. We say, eh, it's all right, ain't no big deal until we lose it. Let me help you out. This is why the shaking comes because it's designed to remove the complacency that is strangled, that has held us hostage, so that now we are now prioritizing, man, I need to be about my father's business. See, it should have happened to you. If it didn't, something wrong with you. When, when First Lady passed, it should have made Husbands appreciate their wives more. Come on. Mm. Come on. It should have. Amen. If it didn't, okay, let me help you out with that. Sleep in the bed by yourself. Right. Every night. Yeah. Walk past a sink that will never be used again. Right. Open a closet and you see clothes that will never come out again. Mm -hmm. Look at pictures that only reflect the past and nothing current. Come on. Okay? Yeah. And so then the shaking comes to cause us to prioritize because some of us have made molehill mountains. And the shaking comes to let you know that's really so petty. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on. In the grand scheme of things, yes. that we're not going to even remember that two years from now. And so, you want to go to sleep mad? Turn your back? Okay. You want to sleep by yourself? You can sleep with your back to yourself all the time. I guarantee you'll forget. What would we mad for? And so it causes this transposing. This why it says it's a removing to put something in the place. What was at the top of my mind is now is no longer, you know, that really don't even matter. Yeah. At the end of the day, really, what, what are we even discussing it for? Yeah. And 
And so the shaking came to make us understand we need to be revived. Yes. That we have become dependent. Mm. Mm. And so then you have to ask yourself, what have you transposed since the shaking? Okay, let me say it actually this way. What have you transposed since she passed? Because her shaking the shame was not about Pastor Ben. What about Christian? It was about his eternal plan for the body. And so then it was designed to cause us now to put to the forefront, you know what? I really need to be more faithful. I really need to be more committed. I really need to be more sensitive. Not everybody. <laughs> Don't look at me, Kathy. Some of us. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And so then the question becomes are you part of the problem or part of the solution now? Can God count on you? Because challenges. Tim, create either champions or cowards. Mm -hmm. wow. wow, that's good. <laughs> the challenges that you'll face, you'll either be a champion <laughs> or a coward. And so the trials that come, they're designed, faith, to train you to reign. Trials are your proving ground. And so then, the shame has come. Because God's plan eternally has risen to the forefront. Because the truth of the matter, a lot of times our plans, what we want. We never consider what God wants with your life. Why has God kept you around? Hmm. You know, I asked that question when the first lady passed. Why you didn't take me? Why her? Why not take me? Why leave me here? What's so significant? Here's why. God's trust in you explains the trials you have. Wow. What are you saying, man? No. If God trusts you, then he doesn't mean bringing trials to you. And his trust in you is evident by the trials you face. Okay. Watch this. Remember when Simon and Gomorrah and Abraham was getting ready to go down there. And there was a question of whether to stop Abraham from going. Because the question of maybe he was going to be swayed by the wickedness. But the Bible says that God told him, he said, I know him. I know if he go out there, he's not going to be swayed. Oh my God. Can God say the same about us? Can God count on us? Can God trust us with trouble? See, some of us can't be trusted with trouble. That's why you don't have none. I'm going to flip it before I'm going to help you. See, some of us are having trouble. Now, granted, some of it, I said before, sin, hellish, disobedient, yes, that will bring trouble. 
But then some of us are having trouble because God trusts you. Wait a minute, why in the world will I have trouble if you trust me? They're like the folk, they're like that should mean a pass. Do it right, no trouble. Live it right, no trouble. Give it right, no trouble. Showing up to church, no trouble. No. It's the other way. God trusts you with trouble. This is why you keep having it. Say, prove it. Have you considered my servant Joe? Can God look at you and say, Have you considered Pam? I'm telling you, Pam is the embodiment of faithfulness. <laughs> what you want, but she's still going to be faithful. Can God say, Have you considered Pam? I know Melba. She'll be in, but she won't break. And so the question God is asking, can I count on you? Can I count on you in this situation? Can I count on you to remain diligent? Because I'm using you as a testament to the body. And so then I'm bringing this shaking to you so that they will see what does faithfulness look like? Because I trust Ben. Ben gonna take it. He gonna take it. I know he will. I know he can handle the shaking. So then, God is searching. Searching. Can I count on you? Because in as much as we love and want everyone to be peace and joy and happiness, that's not what everyone has been assigned. There are some of us, Corey, that God has designated to be shaken, and then there's some that God has, has designated to have to respond to the shaking. And so then people are wondering, man, how are you making it? I was considered. Because I asked the question. Y'all didn't ask it, I asked it for you. Why In fact, me and Tony had this conversation the other day. We were like, Lord, you could have picked some hellish folk to take their life. Yeah. Come on. Their husband would have been okay. Mm -hmm. Why you get our ride? The shaking machine came so I would see who I could count on. The shaking came so God could see who he could count on. And so the shaking comes. It comes to rearrange what's important to you. about getting 5,000 likes? <laughs> that one? Updating your profile every two weeks? But the shaking does this last thing. I'm closing. Please watch this. Because there's a benefit to being shaken. Okay? There's a benefit to being shaken. 
Now you don't see it immediately because you're too engulfed in the emotional loss right. that you're dealing with. Amen. And so this is why God waits till you get in a place where now your consciousness has risen to another level and now you can see things differently. And so then there are times when I have to fight my mind because my mind still want to be here. My mind still want to be here, here. But my spirit is saying, keep on going. Because she's not there. She up ahead of you. why the shaking comes. This is why it's so important to, to stand. To remain faithful when the shaking comes. Because what the shaking does is it accelerates your movement. There's a normal or there's a, or you had a current tempo or pace that you were walking through life, going about your business. Whether you're going five, 10, 15, you have a pace that you were on. When the shaking comes, because it rearranges your priorities and you see the necessity of time being now your greatest asset you alter your pace yeah. because you realize if he would take her at 50 to that means he could take me at 62 so I don't have time to waste because I don't know how much time I got left but this is why some of us have been putting off things that God told you to do last year what you say, Pastor Matt? They fill them, fill them, fix it, about to. And so when the shaking comes, all of a sudden now you say, you know what? Um, I ain't got time with your foolishness. I need to get over here because I don't have much time. And so then what shaking does, it accelerates your priorities. It accelerates your movements. It accelerates your understanding and recognizing I need to get moving because I don't have It creates this divine acceleration. And so watch this. The Bible says in Psalm, watch this, I want you to see it. Psalm 102, verse 13. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. He says, For the time of favor, to favor her, has come. Watch this. He says that the time to favor the church has come. It comes after the shaking. It does not come before the shaking because everybody had proven themselves worthy of the favor that comes. Mm. All right. Oh, God, help me right here. What? Yes. The favor comes because you've endured an event that has caused some to fall away. But by the fact that you stood on the promises of God, you stood on the word of God, you stood trusting God, even though you didn't understand what God was doing. Yeah, yeah. Did God reward you by accelerating things that you thought were far off now become closer than they've ever been before? Because of the shaking. You get to places quicker now because now you understand we need to hurry up. You get to places quicker now, Kathy, because now you realize I ain't got time for you trifling folks. She can't even get there quicker now because you forgot either we're going to do this or we're not. What's up? Either you're in or you're out. Either you're with me or you're not. I'm tired of driving folks. I'm tired of begging folks. I'm tired of pleading folks. I'm tired of running. You here? 
You comment, what you gonna do? Are you in? You out? Are you my friend? You not my friend? You like me? You don't like me? Yeah. And that's the way some of us, our life has been. Because we are living a reactionary life. Yeah. Oh God. We are always reacting to what other people do. But when the shaking comes, it then shifts the focus to you. You need to handle your business now. You don't have time to be waiting where he said, where we thinking about it, where we praying about it, we looking into it, we going to check on it. We got a six month, a seven year plan. It was seven years, seven years ago. Y'all been thinking about it four years ago. What else do you need to see that you have already seen? Mm. Because the truth of the matter, watch this. The truth of the matter, they were already doing what they were doing before the shaking. But you was making exceptions and excuses for them. Yeah. Yeah. Your tolerance was greater then. So then you put up with it. You say, okay, okay, okay. But see now. The fact that you're no longer carrying that weight, this is why you can move faster. Yeah. The reason some of us are moving slow through life is because we're carrying dead weight. Wow. This is why the shaking has to come. Because God is trying to get you to a place faster than what you were doing. See, some of us got in our word more because of what has transpired. Some of us started praying more because of what has transpired. Some of us become, have become better stewards, have become more patient, have become more tolerant, have become more loving, have become more giving, have become more understanding. It was accelerated. And so God creates, God creates, God creates storms in your life. To accelerate you. He creates storms to accelerate you. Say, so prove that. There was a time, I'm closing here. There was a time when Jesus was, had told them, we're going to the other side. And they got in the boat, and the storm came. The Bible says that a great wind blew. And while the storm was raging, might just they look out and they see something on the water. And there was Jesus walking on the water. <coughs> One account tells us that. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, it me come out. He goes out. You know that he was walking, and he started looking around, he started sinking. That's what's happening to some of you. You look too busy looking around. That's why you're drowning. Keep your eyes on God. But in John, it says that Jesus got on board the ship. And immediately, they was at land. What's that saying? They was out in the middle, and a wind blew. A storm came. A shaking came. They caused them to panic. Caused them to get nervous. But then, when Jesus gets on board. It says that immediately they went from where they were to land. What are you saying? The shaking comes because some of us are trying to do things without God on board. Yes. We've not brought God to the table. We just told God what we're going to do. And so the winds are now blowing. 
We don't know where we're going or coming. And because of the shaking, now we stop. And we pray. So when he gets on board, he accelerates your movement. You say, why is that? Why, why is that? Why? Because Jesus had a set time on this earth, did he not? So he could not waste time when he got on board. So anything or anybody that was connected to him reached their destination when he reached his. Right. So then, what would have taken them some more time to get to the shore? But because they had appointment on board their ship, Making sense. Yes. Yes. Because they had Jesus on the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus had to be where he needed to be. Yeah. Because he had 33 and a half years. Yeah. And that wasn't going to change because those wind blew. Yeah. Yeah. Because, mind you, when he walked out on the water, he had his own shore. So he left here to go get there. But he had to get back here because that's where he started from. And so then God is accelerating. We'll accelerate some things in the months to come if we endure the shaking and reprioritize and put him on board. Because it's not your spiritual at this juncture. Because we're always concerned about spiritual. Because that's all we've been taught. Spiritual, 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 spiritual. And it has its place. But there are episodes in your life where you must become eternally minded. Because if you're going to walk with God, And when the scripture talks about let this mind, not just attitude, but if I'm going to think like God, see as God sees, eternally conscious. Because the decisions that God is making are eternally oriented. 